I'd like to discuss ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's not very common, but there's not a lot of data on it. And I stumbled on this incredible book on this topic. I want to share with you some amazing things about this disease. Now, what is ALS? It's a progressive neurodegenerative disease that affects different muscle groups and it's fatal. And uh, people last between three to five years. Roughly about 20,000 people a year develop this. So it's not very common, but boy, if you have this, you need all the data. Presently, if I'm not mistaken, there's only one treatment that only extends your life by five months. And, it, and the cost of it is like $1,400 a month. So the information I'm going to share with you sounds very, very promising, very exciting. And it's from a book called ALS Puzzle Solved. So the person who wrote this book has a very unique way of looking at things, uh, very similar to how I look at things. You know, you list out all the unique things with this disorder and you start to pull a string. What's behind this? What's behind that? What's the connection between this and that? And they did a really good job of connecting the dots. So I'm going to share with you what this person found. So the first thing is the onset of this disease is between 60 years old and 70 years old. It doesn't happen when you're younger. So that's interesting. It's usually higher in men than women, except for when a woman goes through menopause, the ratio goes up where it's like a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's very interesting. There's something about menopause or aging that triggers this disorder. There's also data that shows that there's a potential mutation in certain people with this disorder. The mutation has to do with SOD, and that stands for superoxide dismutase. Not that you need to know that, but that's a, an enzyme that's a very powerful antioxidant, which is going to raise the level of oxidation and free radical damage. And that's called oxidative stress, which makes sense because that's going to affect the nervous system that affects the muscles to a certain degree. There's some mixed reviews on whether it's an autoimmune disease or not. Um, the jury is still out because typical immunosuppressant drugs don't work with this condition. So that makes me believe that it's probably not an autoimmune disease. Also, it spreads gradually from a certain point. There's some data that suggests that it could be stemming from an old injury to the spinal column. There's other data that shows that there's a calcium buildup in certain parts of the spinal column. There's more data that shows that there's heavy metals involved. The solution is to take certain B vitamins. Uh, so I'm not going to get into that, but I just wanted to bring that up. But overall, as we age, there's definitely a shift from antioxidants to more oxidation. Then um, the book goes into some really interesting hormonal shifts after menopause, or even with a man, uh, as they get to be six years old or 70, there's all sorts of hormonal shifts that go on. For females, we're going to see a plummeting estrogen hormone, right? We're also going to see a plummeting progesterone hormone, but even more than the estrogen. We also have a drop in melatonin. Maybe you remember melatonin being a sleep hormone, but melatonin also helps the inside of your cells as an antioxidant. There's also other hormones that decrease, like they're called precursors to all of the sex hormones, like DHEA, and another precursor called pregnenolone. All of those decrease. But there are two hormones that greatly spike and go higher, and that would be a follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. So those are the ones that are going high. The way you have to look at hormones is not individually. Look at them on a pathway, on a circuit. And so if we're getting massively high levels of LH and FSH, that usually means that there's very, very low um, sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So that kind of makes sense. Well, check this out. Progesterone is one of the most potent neuroprotective hormones. And some additional data is that there's some experiment done on mice. And it shows that uh, when you give mice progesterone, uh, there seems to be a greater uh, level of autophagy in the spinal column. So if you have damage going on in a certain part of your body, autophagy can kind of clean it up and make new cells. Clue number two is melatonin. You probably know that melatonin helps you sleep, but you may have not known that melatonin also is one of the most potent antioxidants inside the mitochondria. And as we age, that melatonin goes 
down. And melatonin stimulates that SOD antioxidant enzyme. But the problem is it's too low to do its work, right? To overcompensate for this mutation that apparently could be causing this whole problem in the first place. Uh, as you age, you lose this protective antioxidant uh, network and you lose certain hormones that protect the nervous system. And let's say there's an old injury in your spinal column that could get triggered with various things. But I think the biggest thing is this shift in hormones, which then relates to this shift in antioxidants and protective factors. So, so the first thing you'd want to supplement is melatonin. What we want to do is we want to bring your melatonin back to where you were when you were 20 years old. Because anything we can do to kind of bring back these hormones, potentially we can maybe put this thing in remission. So you might need levels, you know, 75 milligrams, 100 milligrams. I don't know, but that's for you to kind of do some research on. I would also do infrared therapy just because infrared can increase melatonin, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to really bring your melatonin high enough to really create this change because melatonin suppresses that FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, as well as luteinizing hormone, the LH. Melatonin also enhances progesterone. What a coincidence. But in addition to taking melatonin and doing IR, infrared, I would also recommend to take the precursor to progesterone, pregnenolone. That way we can give your body all the material so it can make as much progesterone as it needs. Pregnenolone is a, an available natural thing you can get anywhere. And you might need like 100 milligrams of that. I mean, it would be good to get your levels tested so you can see how low you are and work with someone to get the exact dosage. Also, what's recommended is resveratrol. Resveratrol has many different really amazing properties, one being a powerful antioxidant, which can also decrease the toxicity going on in this condition. What's also recommended is vitamin K2, which could help balance out that soft tissue calcium that could be developing as well. And just make sure you're taking enough B vitamins, but in a natural form. That is the summary of this, what I think is an amazing book and a discovery and definitely a solution to try since there's not a lot of solutions out there for this terrible, terrible disorder. If you have not seen my video on melatonin, I think you'll really like that. And I put that up right here. Check it out.